Thank you. Um, so I have 15 minutes to talk about um, exactly what it is that, that we do, and then um, also the opportunity in built world technology, which is kind of what we focus on. So just quick on who I am and what Fitball is. So I'm the co-founder of a venture capital fund that invests in built world technology, which kind of broadly defined is like commercial real estate technology, residential real estate technology, construction tech, hospitality tech, retail tech, really anywhere where technology touches the physical world. Uh, we have about 260 million under management. Uh, we're backed by a number of the largest real estate corporates um, in the US across different asset classes, like CBRE and brokerage, Prologis and industrial, Lennar and home building, uh, equity residential and apartments. And what we do is we kind of identify technology priorities for these corporates and then invest in them and structure partnerships alongside it. So I'm not going to talk about fifth wall or myself anymore. I'm going to talk about the scale of the opportunity in built world technology, which is oftentimes pretty staggering when you, when you consider it. So I'm going to skip forward to um, this slide, which I think shows, um, if you think about the size of US industries being disrupted, as you kind of consider that software is eating the world, is eating the world. technology is not really a sector unto, it, unto itself. It's kind of impacting many particular subsectors of the US economy. If you think about just the size of real estate, it's the largest industry in the US. Um, and I assume that's probably true in Europe as well. It's about 14% of the US economy. It's the largest asset class. It's the largest lending category. It's the largest store of consumer wealth. And it's by far one of the lowest spenders on IT. So the average US industry spends about 3% of industry revenue on IT. The real estate industry spends one half of 1% on IT. So you just do the math and you figure out, wow, this enormous industry is underspending on IT. And most of the feedback we get from the market is that these organizations are now prepared to, they see the opportunity to invest in technology. So one of the interesting things is when you look at kind of one, the size of the industry, where it is on um, kind of a spectrum of innovation from like almost no innovation, they're in the dark ages to high levels of innovation. And then the amount of venture capital kind of in these spaces, it's one of the most interesting spaces because you have not a lot of venture capital focused on real estate tech, despite an enormous industry early in the adoption of technology. There's also a lot going on in the real estate industry as it relates to technology. And this is everything from connectivity in buildings, making buildings smarter, making buildings more like your cell phone, more contextually aware, to simple software that simply enables the real estate industry to do what it already does better. Oftentimes what constitutes innovation in real estate is taking physical ledger books and Excel spreadsheets and just doing them in the cloud. Um, but there's a limitless array almost of technologies that are impacted um, or that, that actually sell directly into the real estate industry. The scale of the outcomes also in real estate tech are quite large. So Zillow, Priceline, Airbnb, WeWork, Expedia, just those companies alone is over $220 billion of public and private enterprise value in real estate and hospitality tech. So what's interesting is that largely because the size of this industry is so large, um, the underlying technology outcomes also become quite large, which is one of the reasons that venture capital has started to now focus on this particular category. It's also been one of the fastest growing uh, verticals in technology. So if you actually look at the number of companies founded, um, the amount of dollars those companies have raised, it's grown quite dramatically since 2012. So this year it's projected that about $3 billion will go into real estate tech. And that number doesn't even include like construction tech, hospitality tech, retail tech. So the category itself has started to consume an enormous amount of US venture capital. This represents just in real estate tech, approximately 6% of all US venture capital. So if you add in those related spaces, it's actually quite a large subsector of the industry. If you kind of exclude, well, if you include Uber, things look a little uh, screwy, and it looks like on-demand transportation is kind of the largest, but it's actually produced some of the largest outcomes 
in technology. Um, so by different verticals, the, the number um, of unicorns created and the size of those unicorns is actually quite large. And the number of unicorns being created is also, um, as you can see, accelerating quite rapidly. One of the questions we get asked a lot is, why is this happening? Um, and I think this slide might be a good segue uh, in, into our panel. Um, but one is just the size of the market, right? The scale of the real estate industry. It's the largest industry, as I mentioned. It's the largest asset class. It's the largest lending category. Another factor to consider is that it's been increasingly institutionalized. So there's greater and greater levels of institutional ownership across the real estate industry. The same players own more and more assets. And that concentration has given the impetus for like a real emphasis on operational efficiency. Can you actually leverage technology to make your business more efficient by cutting out cost, by optimizing revenue, um, and dr by driving just an implementing change of technologies? It's also lowered the cost for many real estate technology startups, and um, it's given them a real first mover advantage by being able to partner with an organization like CBRE or with an organization like Equity Residential earlier. You also have a younger generation of operators and CEOs at real estate companies that have come to expect technology in most aspects of their lives that are now running large real estate organizations that are just largely under technologized. And so just psychologically now, there's a lot of tailwinds behind driving and, and innovating that change. I think you've also seen the threat that has come from, say, Amazon to the retail industry. And so the need of you can't ignore technology um, or Airbnb and hotels. I think those threats have actually proved to be quite existential for different asset classes of the US real estate industry. And so owners are now focused on it. And you're seeing kind of this stripping of, of assets from services. So companies like WeWork and companies like Airbnb these are companies where WeWork doesn't own a single office building, and today it's the most valuable private real estate company, real, off, real estate office company in the US, which is quite startling. I mean, Airbnb now is already one of the largest hospitality companies without owning a single hotel. So you've seen this bifurcation of assets from ownership and operations, which I think has incentivized owners to consider what are the disruptive forces they need to stay abreast of. So I think with that, um, 